I'll solve this spring mass system having two masses, both the masses having force acting on it. And we have to find what will be the maximum elongation in the spring. We can do it by two methods. I'll do it by both the methods. First, I will use the traditional method, then I will do the center of mass method. So in the traditional method, which is very straightforward, there are certain steps which you have to keep in mind. One is that the original length of spring is say L0 unstretched length and let x1 and x2 be the coordinates of the two masses at any point of time these are time variable so the length of spring at any time is equal to x2 minus x1 so the extension of spring at any time which i denote by u will be length of spring and at any time minus l0 or u t is equal to x2 minus x1 minus l0 or i simply write u which is a variable in terms of time so this is the extension of the spring i want to find u maximum what will be the what can be the maximum value of u so in such cases just write the equation of motion for both the masses simply in terms of these coordinates x1 x2 are variable and these are measured along x axis so my this direction is positive so m1 x1 double dot is mass into acceleration for m1 which would be equal to what are the forces which are helping m1 x1 is in this direction so take all the forces which are helping x1 double dot which is f1 is helping and the spring if it is getting stretched naturally spring is getting stretched it is pulling from both the sides so as far as m1 is concerned string is pulling in this side and for m2 this string is pulling in this side so for m1 the force is towards this is x1 double dot and for it it is x2 double dot so c for x1 the force f1 was in this direction f2 here so this diagrams make it very clear so when you write m1 x1 double dot you have to write plus f equal to plus f1 plus the spring force which is k times u it is x2 minus x1 minus l0 similarly for m2 x2 you can write m2 x2 double dot is equal to what is helping x2 f2 and the spring force is in opposite direction so it is minus k times u now divide this by m1 whole divide by m1 and divide this by m2 whole divide by m2 and subtract these equations so you get x2 double dot minus x1 double dot is equal to f2 upon m2 minus f1 upon m1 minus k u 1 upon m1 plus 1 upon m2 i have subtracted this is equation a and this is b and this is nothing but b minus a that is what i have done and that is what you get now this x2 double dot minus x1 double dot if you differentiate you twice you get x2 double dot minus x1 double dot because l0 is constant so this is nothing but u double dot so u double dot is equal to f2 upon m2 minus f1 upon m1 minus k u m1 plus m2 upon m1 m2 and there's a standard practice of writing mu as m1 m2 upon m1 plus m2 in such cases where we have two masses connected by a spring and mu is called as the reduced mass it only reduces the calculation so avoids the mistakes also it has a significance not only this uh, helping the calculation it has a significance you will come to know when this mu comes in the equation now just put z is equal to f2 upon m2 minus f1 upon m1 this part i am putting as equal to z minus k u upon mu where mu is this m1 m2 upon m1 plus m2 now if you differentiate z twice this anyway gets eliminated it's a constant becomes minus k u double dot upon mu so in this equation which is u double dot is equal to z because this i have put as equal to z 
put the value of u double dot here you get u double dot is z double dot mu upon k minus is equal to z or I can write z double dot plus k upon mu into z is equal to 0 this is nothing but equation of simple harmonic motion and this is what omega square so your omega square is equal to k upon mu or omega is equal to under root k upon what is mu is m1 m2 upon m1 plus m2 this is your value of omega anyway the problem is not done so far we have to find the maximum extension now once this equation is done is you got once you get this equation things are done so now I can write a general equation for simple harmonic motion which is a z is equal to a sine omega t plus b cos omega t I am putting both the terms don't just use one term when you to write general equation write both the equations and put the initial conditions initial conditions are two one is that t is equal to zero there is no displacement and t is equal to zero there is no velocity of the masses so that is the initial condition so put t is equal to zero so z at t is equal to zero would be equal to b and what is the value of z z is this and what it becomes at t is equal to zero at t is equal to zero u is zero there is no extension in this string spring so z is equal to f2 so this z at t is equal to zero is f2 upon m2 minus f1 upon m1 so I get the value of b now differentiate it once you get z double dot is a omega cos omega t minus b omega sine omega t now at t is equal to 0 u dot is 0 because both these are 0 x dot and both the velocities were 0 so u dot was 0 when u dot is 0 means you differentiate it once z dot is this is 0 and this is u dot so t is equal to 0 z dot is 0 so this is 0 so 0 is equal to a omega means a is 0 so my equation is only in terms of cosine so I get z is equal to now it is almost done f2 upon m2 minus f1 upon m1 cos omega t and I put the value of z which is f2 upon m2 minus f1 upon m1 minus k upon mu into u was the value of z so now we can solve this equation I get k u upon mu is equal to f2 upon m2 minus f1 upon m1 1 minus cos omega t this is value of u which is extension I can write u is equal to mu upon k f2 upon m2 minus f1 upon m1 1 minus cos omega t when this u will be maximum u is please note u is extension it is maximum when cos omega t is minus 1 when cos omega t is minus 1 or omega t is equal to pi so at t is equal to pi by omega I get the maximum extension and which is it becomes u is equal to twice mu upon k f2 upon m2 minus f1 upon m1 and what is mu upon k we got this omega square mu upon k is equal to 1 upon omega square so it becomes u maximum is equal to twice upon omega square f2 upon m2 minus f1 upon m1 and this is my answer as far as the first method is concerned let me do it using the other method which is the center of mass method and you can choose any one which you want this second method is a much shorter method but it has some concepts are there once you use it it becomes easy now first of all any system having combination of forces f1 f2 f3 in case of tr translational motion we take all the forces acting at the center of mass and this will have some acceleration a center of mass which is again a vector quantity so all the forces are vectorially added you add them in vector form 
So here F1 plus F2 are the vectors added to get resultant F and mass of the system which is say M1 plus M2 plus M3 whatever masses are there into the acceleration of center of mass is equal to sum of all the forces added in vector form. This is a standard method because all the forces are presumed are assumed to be taking are acting actually at the center of mass for the translational motion. Now in this case the forces which are acting are F1 plus F2 and the mass of the system is M1 plus M2. So the mass of center of acceleration of center of mass is F1 plus F2 upon M1 plus M2. Now I shift my frame to the frame of the center of mass. So my center of mass frame is moving with some acceleration. This whole frame, which is the frame, suppose this is the stationary frame and this is my center of mass frame. X dash Y dash and this is X and Y. Now this is moving with an acceleration. This frame is moving with an acceleration A center of mass. So whatever bodies are there in this system, all these bodies will experience a force which is called the pseudo force. If it is M1, it will be M1 into A center of mass and this is opposite to the direction of center of mass. This is M2 A center of mass. This is M3 A center of mass. So all the masses will experience a force which is opposite to the direction of the acceleration of that frame of reference. Now take this case where this is the reference frame which is moving with acceleration A center of mass. This is a center of mass frame and it is moving with acceleration. Now there are two masses there. So both the masses will experience force which is M1 A center of mass and it will also experience M2 A center of mass. And when the motion has started with the, the frame of reference has started moving with the acceleration A center of mass these end points of the spring try to look at the end points of the spring these are the two end points of the string spring what are the forces acting on that on the end points one is this f1 was already acting f2 was already acting now these forces will be there whether you take in the fixed frame or in the center of mass frame these forces were acting on the ends of the spring once you look at the center of mass frame, you have to just add another force, which is the force due to the pseudo force. So it is M1 A center of mass here, M2 A center of mass here. These are the additional forces which you have to consider at the ends of the spring. Now the forces which are acting at the two ends of the spring in this frame, here in this frame, these are the ends of the spring. These are stretching the spring and these are constant C. This is not varying. M is constant, center of mass is constant, acceleration of center of mass is constant. Nothing is varying, so these are constant forces. So here it is if F on F total on 1 and this is F total on 2. So and here the extension is suppose delta 1 and here the extension is delta 2. This extension has taken place under force total 1 and it is under force total 2. So this force is constant force. So the work done on one side will be F total 1 into delta 1 and work done on the other side is F total 2 into delta 2. Now this work done should be stored in some kind of energy. So it will be stored in the kinetic energy of the masses plus potential energy of the masses of the spring. The, and it is in center of mass frame kinetic energy in the center of mass frame potential energy in the center of mass frame now these are the extensions which i am looking in the center of mass frame delta 1 and delta 2 what about the kinetic energy i want a situation where the extension is maximum when the extension is maximum just see when the extension is maximum some extension has happened delta 1 and delta 2 and it is such that delta 1 plus delta 2 now is delta maximum at the maximum extension there is no relative motion between these two masses both will move with some velocity a this will also move with some velocity a at that point of time 
and it is m1 and it is m2 because this is maximum extension string is spring is now like a thread tight thread and just for that moment they are moving with the same velocity what is the velocity of center of mass it will be m1 va plus m2 va upon m1 plus m2 just like acceleration we have found we can find the center of mass velocity so center of mass velocity is va velocity of center of mass will be same as the velocity of two bodies if both the bodies are moving with the same velocity at the time of maximum extension both the bodies will move with the same velocity important point and when two bodies are moving with the same velocity and if there are only two bodies in the system the center of mass will have the same velocity as the velocity of these two bodies so what is now the velocity of body one in center of mass frame center of mass frame is moving with v a with respect to this frame with respect to this frame it is moving with v a and this is also moving with VA with respect to this frame. So what is the velocity of this in this frame? Both are having zero velocity. Their velocity in the center of mass frame is zero. Because the velocity of center of mass is VA, I am also moving with VA. So what is my velocity relative to the frame in which I am moving? My frame itself is moving with VA. I am moving with VA. So my velocity in center of mass frame so kinetic energy in center of mass frame is zero not always only at the time of same velocity which is at maximum extension so my equation now simply becomes work done w1 plus w2 will be stored as half k maximum extension is now delta 1 delta 2 whole square now let me add the w1 and w2 w1 is equal to what is the value of the of the f total one let me write that also f total one is equal to m1 a center of mass minus f1 which is m1 f1 plus m1 f2 upon m1 plus m2 minus f1 and by solving you get m1 f1 plus this is m1 f2 minus f1 m1 minus f1 m2 upon m1 plus m2 this is f total 1 it becomes this gets cancelled so it becomes m1 f2 minus f1 m2 upon m1 plus m2 this is f total 1 what is f total 2 f total 2 is f2 minus m2 because i am seeing the forces along i was seeing the forces along the extension here, here i was seeing in this direction here i was seeing in this direction i am seeing the forces along the displacement so here i have taken m1 a center of mass minus f1 here i am taking f2 minus m2 a center of mass is f1 plus m2 f2 upon m1 plus m2 so my f t2 is f2 m1 plus f2 m2 minus m2 f1 minus m2 f2 upon m1 plus m2 so this is 2 this gets cancelled so my f total 2 is f2 m1 minus m2 f1 upon m1 plus m2 and this is my f t1 actually both are same m1 f2 m1 f2 minus m2 f1 minus m2 f1 so both are same let me write it as f dash this is f dash both are same so work done is equal to f dash delta 1 plus f dash delta 2 which is f dash delta 1 plus delta 2 so now i can just remove it and my things are almost done so my work done is f2 m2 minus f1 m2 
upon m1 plus m2 into delta 1 plus delta 2 is the distance is this based on this distance for each force was anyway common is equal to half k delta 1 plus delta 2 whole square this is the potential energy as we have seen there is no kinetic energy at that point of time this gets cancelled so you get delta 1 plus delta 2 which is maximum condition is twice f2 m2 minus f1 m f2 it was f2 m1 sorry f2 m1 minus f2 m1 minus f1 m2 upon m1 plus m2 upon k now take m1 m2 common so you get 2 m1 m2 upon k m1 plus m2 it becomes f2 upon m2 minus f1 upon m1 i have just taken m1 m2 common so it becomes f2 upon m2 minus f1 upon m1 and i get and this is same result i have got it is two times this is omega square f2 upon m2 minus f1 upon m1 is my maximum extension so whichever method you use you are getting the same result you can see which method you would like to use